Hello, this is Austin with Josh's Frogs, and today I'm going to show you how to set up a bioactive Pac-Man frog setup. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is add substrate. And then when you get it in your tank, you're going to want to mix it up. Make sure if there's any large chunks of cocoa fiber that you break those up as well. nice and mixed up. The next step is the most important step of the whole process, is adding the water. So one of the number one issues that we have customers asking us about is how much water they should be adding to their substrates so that their frogs aren't having issues with drying out and things like that. And so a good rule of thumb with most substrates that have cocoa fiber and other earthy substrates in them is to add water until when you take a handful, you squeeze it and it sticks together. So right now this could use a little bit more and you know you've added too much if when you squeeze a handful of the substrate a lot of water comes out. Um, but the easy thing about fixing that is you can just take large handfuls and squeeze it out into a bucket or um, another container just to collect the rest of the water. So when you squeeze a handful of it, it's gonna stick together like that. It's not super necessary to pat down all of the substrate like this, um, but it, because the frog is going to move around and explore its new habitat. The next part is adding some live plants. Uh, for Pac-Man frogs, you're going to want to choose something that vines, puts down multiple root structures so that if the Pac-Man frog decides that underneath the plant is the place that it wants to be, it's not gonna uproot something that has just one stem and you're gonna have to move the plant, replant it, and if the frog just really enjoys being underneath the plant, um, you're gonna run into issues with the plant potentially dying. Um, you can also, with these, to kind of prevent them from doing that when you're first planting them, just put the whole plant pot directly in there and fill it in like this. And if you know anything about pothos, this will very, very quickly fill in the rest of the tank. Um, maintenance on that is pretty easy. You can just take a pair of scissors and trim down whenever you notice that things are getting a little bit out of hand. The next important thing for a Pac-Man frog is making sure that you have a water dish for them that can fit their entire body size in the water dish. Um, depending on whether or not your Pac-Man frog is a male or a female, um, that water dish size is going to vary. Uh, females of Pac-Man frogs can get about this big, so you're wanting to get something that's probably about four inches across. Uh, they don't need to be able to submerge their whole body in the water dish, uh, just be able to kind of sit in it and soak up extra water if they ever feel a bit too dry. Next would be leaf litter. When we set, send bags of leaf litter, uh, you're probably gonna have too much when you're setting up a Pac-Man frog enclosure. But these animals in the wild spend most of their time under various layers of leaf litter. Um, they don't come out a ton. They kind of just dig themselves a little bit of a hole and wait for prey to come by, and anytime something moves in front of them, it's advantageous for them to strike at it. Uh, so definitely watch your fingers when you are um, digging through your tank to find your Pac-Man frog. Um, 
depending on how cold your frog's enclosure is, you may need to add a heat mat. Um, but here at Josh's Frogs, most of our areas are kept in the mid 70s, and that is just right for a Pac-Man frog. Um, if you look up, a lot of places will list that the Pac-Man frog's native habitat reaches into the 80s, and most of the time that is not taking into consideration that these Pac-Man frogs are hiding under leaf litter, like I mentioned earlier. And so when they're under the leaf litter, you're gonna see a variance of five and sometimes upwards to 10 degrees cooler than under direct sunlight, which is what those um, readings would be on a thermometer. Uh, in order to monitor your temperature and humidity, uh, we recommend a temperature and humidity gauge or a combo meter. Um, this one does both and it is a digital one. Uh, so you know that the readings are going to be accurate. Now for the fun part that everyone is going to enjoy is adding the Pac-Man frog. Today I have an adult male Pac-Man frog. Uh, this is a strawberry morph. I'm gonna put him right in here. And then he'll hop around. He'll find a place to bury himself and he'll wait to, for food to come by. Um, most of the time in a bioactive setup, you're going to want to be tong feeding your frogs just to limit the chance of impaction. I recommend longer tongs than um, not because uh, like I said, these guys will strike at pretty much anything that moves in front of their faces and that can kind of include a larger jump than you may be expecting. Um, so being having your fingers as far away from their mouths when you're feeding them as possible is recommended so that you don't accidentally get bit. Um, it's not going to cause any long lasting damage if you do end up getting bit by your Pac-Man frog, uh, but it's not going to want to let go. So it might take a little bit for it to let go um, and maybe a little bit of coaxing, uh, but it's not something that you want to have happen in the first place. And so to mitigate that, we always recommend longer tongs. So now, hopefully, after watching this video, you know how to set up a bioactive Pac-Man frog enclosure. Thanks so much for watching this video. Here at Josh's Frogs, bringing nature to your doorstep is more than just our mission, it's our passion. We want you to have the most successful experience possible, so we're going to be here for you before, during, and after your purchase. Whether that's with our captive bred animals, plants, insects, or the wide variety of their care products on our website. You always have access to our dedicated customer service team, on-site nature experts, hundreds of free articles via our blog, and many more videos right here on our YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe. We're always happy to help. Just shoot us an email or give us a call. You can find all of this information and more at joshesfrogs.com. Thanks again and see you next time.